Hello and welcome to the Cloud Developer Channel. In today's video, we're going to continue the discussion about Service Fabric. Specifically, the topic I'm going to cover today is how do you start building a scalable Web API application? And what we're going to be using is ASP.NET Core Web API project as the starting point. So in the prior video, we actually went through uh, of how do you actually go ahead and uh, set one up where you can just simply go in and uh, create a new project. You uh, pick the service fabric application and you choose your uh, stateless or stateful application. So uh, if I just uh, go ahead and do REST API, just to show you uh, an example of this, you can go ahead and choose uh, stateless ASP.NET Core or stateful. So in our particular case, since we're not going to be sharing state, uh, which implies that a user can hit any instance of our application and they should be able to get what they need out of that instance without having to actually log in or be able to know um, that they they are logging in into a particular instance of the application. You want to use a stateless uh, SP.NET Core um, project template. Also, uh, if you're actually letting the user use a, a a backend uh, database such as SQL Server uh, to store the state information. That is another uh, good reason to use this. Now, if you're trying to use state and actually persist or store state uh, somewhere within Service Fabric itself, you want to actually start using the stateful ASP.NET Core uh, application template. So we already have one created. We basically just created a very simple dummy one and I have it open already. So I'll just go ahead and uh, navigate to that. And it's called the SF Context Application. In this application, all we have is basically a single controller. Um, all it has is just this uh, get uh, method. And it returns uh, a string uh, of value one and then the actual name of the machine. Just to show you uh, some information about uh, the request and the environment that the actual uh, API application itself is running in. And we're going to ignore these other uh, methods as we don't actually need them for the purpose of this uh, tutorial. So um, right now I also have a, a Dev cluster set up of Service Fabric and contains uh, five nodes. So let me go ahead and navigate to that. And you do that by typing in the name of your cluster and one of your cluster nodes. And if you go to port 19,080, uh, you'll be taken to the Service Fabric Explorer. So what you'll notice here is I have my five nodes, and uh, these nodes don't have anything running on them, and then I also don't have any applications. So if I click on the cluster, everything goes good, everything is healthy as well. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is I'm going to go ahead and deploy this application on that um, particular uh, Service Fabric cluster. So And you do that by right-clicking on this context application, and go ahead and click publish. And in my case, what I had is I, you know, it comes standard with cloud, local one node, and local five node. So what I did was I clicked on manage profiles, I selected the local five, clicked create copy, and then I renamed it to uh, to use the name that I wanted to have, and basically uh, click close. And then you can go ahead and adjust your settings here. Now, um, I've also gone ahead and, and created the, the application parameter file, which uh, also is done the same way. You can click Manage Parameters, and then I just copied the, the local 5 node and created the version that I needed. And then you can click Edit, and here you can actually adjust some settings for your application. So in this particular case, I'm just uh, managing the uh, instance count of how many instances I want of this application to start uh, when it gets deployed to the cluster. So I also had this application deployed. So uh, what you want to do is if you're doing a brand new deployment, um, you're not upgrading the application. So you basically leave this upgrade the application unchecked. Um, however, if you are making an update to your application, you would go ahead and check this, especially if it's already deployed in a cluster. And then you would want to actually tell uh, this uh, deployment profile that you want to upgrade. So in this case, we will be going from version 1.0.1 to 1.0.2. So you would save it and then uh, click publish. Also, something of note is that if you're updating just the configuration aspect, then you want to only update this config um, 
item. And what this will do is simply upgrade the configuration and it will actually not perform a redeployment of your application, which can actually save some time as well. So in this particular case, uh, I don't actually need to change anything. So I'm just going to go ahead and perform the, the initial deployment. So I'll go ahead and uh, click publish here and uh, we'll see what happens. So what uh, you'll notice, uh, first of all, is it's actually uh, copying all the files and creating a package. And then now it's actually copying the application itself to the application image store, which is hosted within the service fabric cluster. And you can see also it's actually beginning to deploy and um, it's actually completed with that step now. So if we go to our cluster, you'll notice that the application showed up here and it got registered. And then if we start expanding it, we'll notice that um, all of the details are shown up. However, one of the nodes um, is uh, has this question mark, which basically means that it's still deploying that. So, and as you can see, now it's done. So what you'll see is, since I had three instances defined, it actually deployed to three different nodes in my cluster. And you'll see what the nodes are here. And you also see the details uh, under each node and where, you know, all the details behind those uh, code packages, where they're deployed and things like that. So the thing that I wanted to show you is this is actually a web API application. So we should be able to access it somehow. So what you can do is you can click on one of these nodes uh, within the, what's called a partition. And then when you click on it, you'll see the endpoint listed right here. And uh, you'll see that there's a URL. Now, if you go ahead and click on this, you'll actually see that you don't get anything. But uh, that's simply because we actually need to navigate to the actual uh, Web API controller. So in this case, it's going to be API slash values. And um, you'll notice that I am actually um, getting the JSON response back. And the first one is value one. The second one is the actual name of the node where we're accessing the application. Now, uh, what's uh, important to note is that right now it's deployed in node zero, three, and four. So what that means is if I go to node three, uh, the name of the URL actually changes. So if I go here and I'll put in uh, API values, I'll be able to actually see that the name matches the server name. So also if I change it to four, you'll see that um, everything is working correctly. Now this is good because um, you can actually go ahead and scale this out as well. So what I can do is I can uh, click this the three ellipses and click scale service. I can choose uh, five and go ahead and scale it out. And what this will do is actually will deploy two additional instances one on each node. Um, this way I'll actually have all five nodes running this instance. And uh, what I should be able to do now is navigate to those URLs and be able to hit each one of them. Now, that's uh, good to know, but um, it's not very usable right now because what if uh, one of these nodes actually goes down? I need to now be able to actually check to see and make sure that the nodes are not down um, or put some kind of a service in front of it. The good thing about Service Fabric is it actually comes with an application gateway service or what is called a reverse proxy. And uh, how you can know actually if you have it configured correctly, if you go to cluster node and then go to the manifest, you'll see that um, in the node type definition, you'll actually notice a few different settings. And one of those is this application, HTTP application gateway endpoint that is hosted on port 19,081 using HTTP protocol. So what this uh, gives you is the ability to actually navigate to this endpoint, this API endpoint on the cluster without actually having to know which uh, node is actually hosting it. So whether it's one or all five, it will actually uh, perform uh, a sort of um, load balancing functionality for you. So uh, the way that you actually get to this endpoint is there's a couple of things to note. One is you need to know the actual application uh, name. So in this particular case, you need to know the application name, which is the SF context application, and then the actual uh, service that you're trying to navigate to, which in this case is SF context API. So let me copy this here. And I'll go to uh, the URL here. And what I have to do here is just simply put in 19,081 slash, and then the name. 
And then if I, I still want to navigate to the actual API controller, so I'll put slash API slash values. Now, whether you actually hit it on node four or node zero or node one, it doesn't really matter at this point uh, because each one of the service fabric cluster nodes actually is running the same uh, application gateway. But what you'll notice is if I start refreshing uh, the browser, you'll notice that the actual node names are changing. And that's because the uh, proxy, the reverse proxy itself is actually uh, circulating the requests across the entire cluster um, so that uh, it, it's very scalable. So in this particular case, if I go ahead and, and scale this down to only one node, you'll notice that um, these other nodes will disappear. And uh, when I start refreshing, it will only uh, have one of the nodes responding. Now you also see all these warning signs, and this is normal, you know, after a few seconds, uh, the service fabric cluster is gonna heal uh, and the application is gonna start behaving normally. But uh, at this point, only node two is showing up here. So if I go ahead uh, and start refreshing, you'll notice that only node two is actually responding to my requests. So, and then if I go ahead and try to scale this out uh, back to, uh, let's say three nodes, we'll actually redeploy uh, on two additional nodes. And then, you know, while this is all happening, I can actually start refreshing and uh, the service fabric cluster is automatically uh, beginning to show the values uh, that uh, are coming back from the API endpoint. And this is the, the benefit of using Service Fabric is it allows you to perform all that orchestration without you having to worry about which ones, uh, which endpoints are available and which ones are not. So another uh, very useful thing to note as well is if I actually go ahead and let's say I need to perform some kind of an upgrade on my application and uh, maybe I need to actually shut down one of my nodes before, for maintenance purposes, maybe patching is going on. So uh, let's say, let's do that for uh, node one right now. So if I choose node one and I'm gonna go ahead and restart it and it needs the node name and I'll go ahead and restart it. You'll see that um, it's automatically going to refresh and one of the nodes um, is going to actually, well, node one is going to disappear and node zero is going to show up. Now, from this endpoint's uh, perspective, um, it's as if though nothing actually happened. Now, you did notice that there was a blip in the system and the reason for that is because I was actually pointing to node one itself as the service was actually restarting. But let's say I was pointing to a different node um, or a load balancer that actually knew about every node of the service fabric cluster, I would not even see that blip. But it was quick enough and I didn't have to worry about um, the user being impacted much by the actual service uh, change. So as you can see, it's a very robust way of being able to host and scale your applications as you need to. And you can actually script a, a lot of this functionality through PowerShell and you can even use C Sharp APIs to do all of that. So um, this is uh, pretty much how simple it is to get started with being able to build very scalable, um, highly available uh, web API or REST enabled API endpoints uh, for your solution. Now, in the next video, I actually wanna show you how to start uh, adding some additional components to this uh, application. Specifically, you can actually build a, a web-based application itself using the ASP.NET Core MVC framework. And uh, there are some gotchas there because of how the actual application template itself is built. And I'll show you some of those gotchas and then we'll be able to actually build uh, an instance that's also highly scalable and it will actually consume one of these endpoints. So we'll tie them together all in one application, which will make uh, uh, one application that gives you the ability to scale out and actually be able to go through upgrade processes as well without any end user impact or very little downtime. So if you have any questions, go ahead and uh, leave your comments in the comment section below. If you like this content, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and I will be releasing additional videos about service fabric as there's a lot more content about you know being able to build reliable actors, reliable services, um, Docker containers and such. So we'll be discussing all of those topics in the near future. So hopefully you enjoyed this content and I will talk to you later.